Hello there, and thank you for tuning in to see what the world looks like through atheist eyes with Frank Zindler. I'm Frank Zindler, and I'm the editor of American Atheist Press. Today's program is the first of two interviews I had recently with a remarkable young woman named Amanda Metzges. Amanda is the executive director of an organization called Camp Quest. What is Camp Quest? In a moment, you'll find out, but I'll give you a hint. It's partly related to the problem of being an atheist, but not being able to go to Boy Scout camp because the Boy Scouts still discriminate against atheists. It also relates to the problem of a non-religious kid not wanting to have to go to Jesus camp or summer Bible adventure world. Come on, let's... Let's meet Amanda Metzges. Today, I have a very different guest uh, from the usual. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of having a woman on my show, but not just any woman, a very remarkable young woman named Amanda Metzges. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Frank. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, Amanda is the director, or should I say directrix? <laughs> executive the, director. Executive director. Okay, that solves the problem. The executive director of Camp Quest. And we're going to find out what Camp Quest is all about, and we're going to find out quite a bit about this wonderful guest that I have today. Amanda, um, Camp Quest is a Camp Quest is a network of summer camps. We are aimed at kids from non-religious families. And we say that Camp Quest is about three things. It's mm -hmm. about fun, friends, and free thought. So it's your typical summer camp, you know, critical thinking challenges. Oh, wait, that's not your typical summer camp. <laughs> that's not um, typical. No, 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 Canoeing, no. <laughs> swimming, arts and crafts, but also mm -hmm. critical thinking challenges, making friends with other kids from non-religious families so that you know that... You know, your family's not the only family that doesn't go mm -hmm. to church. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you kind of feel like when you go back to school, hey, I know that there's a community out there of secular families and that, that my parents are okay and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you are the executive director of Camp Quest, but that's not a single camp. Right. So that's our national office. We have... Well, in 2015, we will have 18 weeks of camp in the U.S. at 16 different locations. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Right? Um, that's a, a long way from uh, 1996, oh 20 kids. 96 um, is when Camp Quest began. Right, yes. And that began with? 20 campers and I think maybe about 10 adults at the Bullitsburg Baptist Church Camp oh in Kentucky. Oh, my goodness. Is that ironic? It was. Um, I, I wasn't there back then, but but I hear great stories. Yes, so. yes. And Camp Quest was founded by? It was founded by Edwin and Helen Kagan, and um, they worked with several other members of the Free Inquiry Group of Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. That's right. I forgot that that was the connection, the Free Inquiry Group. Today. Right. And so those folks got together and, and they said, you know, there's the Boy Scouts, but the Boy Scouts discriminates. You know, kids yes, who don't yes. have a religious belief, they're told you can't be the best kind of citizen. Yeah, Boy well, Scouts can't be atheists. Right. Or atheists can't be Boy Scouts. Right. Um, maybe maybe <laughs> right. both. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, there was this real need for a community for kids and families. You know, we have all of these groups around the country, but they're mainly, at the time especially, they were mainly, you know, a lecture series or something that was aimed at adults, and, and that's great, but people with kids were saying, well, well, what do we do? How do we show our kids a way into this community and that, you know, that a secular worldview can be fun and empowering and, you know, can involve just as much in the way of kind of ethics and personal development, all those kinds of things mm -hmm. that people normally get from religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you mentioned that there are 16 camps quest. Maybe you could tick them off, and I sure. think we'll be able to pull up the video uh, of the map uh, showing mm -hmm. them. But uh, for the conversation part of this, can you tell us where, where you are? Sure. So we have, in 2015, 16 locations. 
Camp Quest Northwest is running a Washington session and an Oregon session. Camp Quest West is running a Northern California session in Nevada City, California, and a Southern California session near Los Angeles. We have Camp Quest Colorado, Camp Quest Arizona. I've got to count here. <laughs> um, Camp Quest Minnesota, Camp Quest Kansas City, Camp Quest Oklahoma, Camp Quest Texas, Camp Quest Ohio, Camp Quest Michigan, Camp Quest Smoky Mountains, Camp Quest South Carolina, Camp Quest New England, and Camp Quest Chesapeake. So those are our 16 locations around the U.S. And then we have overseas partners in the U.K., Norway, and Switzerland. My goodness, that is fantastic. Now, how did the uh, European um, camps come to be? Uh... Sure. So the way Camp Quest spread is that Edwin and Helen and the Free Inquiry Group folks started Camp Quest in, originally in Kentucky, and then they moved to Ohio. And other people started contacting them and saying, hey, um, you know, will you come start a Camp Quest in Tennessee? And Edwin said, well, no, but, but you can start a Camp <laughs> Quest in Tennessee. <laughs> That's just so, like Edwin. Right. Yeah. So he kept inviting people to come see the original camp and then take the model home and replicate it. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that happened with Camp Quest UK. Samantha Stein came to Camp Quest Michigan, learned the ropes there, got to know people involved in camp, and then she went back to the UK and started camp there. Well, the um, the Camp Quest Norway folks, they started going to Camp Quest UK. Oh, and they well, learned I the see. ropes from her. So we I have see. this kind of snowball effect. Yes, of camp yes. Spreading. Yes. That's, that's wonderful. Um, we've been talking about Edwin and Helen Kagan. And I think we're going to have to do a separate little show uh, about them and, and the history of, of Camp Quest in, in, in more detail because it's it's quite amazing and they are they were both just amazing people and very very interesting. Yeah. Um, now, is you 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 are coordinator? Is that, is that basically your job now as as director, so, executive director? Right, so our national office focuses on providing support services and mm -hmm. coordination I to see. all of our camps around the country. So, uh -huh. you know, things like, gee, it's really nice to come to one common website and find out about all of the different locations, all of the different ah, sessions. Good. And then we also do things like develop program materials that all of the camps can use we run a weekend-long training session for volunteers from all over the country to come uh -huh. and meet other volunteers at other camps, learn what awesome things are going on in different parts of the country, and then we can also provide training. You know, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. do you um, how do you work with a camper who's really homesick? Yeah. How do you um, you know how do you handle registration and deal with all of the parent questions and make sure that you've got a good set of volunteer staff yeah, yeah, and all of those things, you know, running a summer camp is a, a complex yes, machine. Yes, yeah. so Now what is this uniform, this uh, uniform website, this unified site? CampQuest.org. CampQuest.org. I so, think we can fly that so you can see it. If pretty you simple. Forget about it. <laughs> but but anyway, uh, that they'll be able to read it and have a visual memory of it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, CampQuest.org. And um, that then will give them information about all these 16 sites right. in the United right. States and how they can register and... and Absolutely. And, and, and registration is open now and registration fills up fast. A lot of our sessions every year go to a waiting list. Camp Quest mm. Texas last year, I think they had 70 kids on their oh waiting list. Oh my goodness. List. So our, our largest problem as an organization yeah. is how do we grow fast enough while still maintaining yes. a common mission, making sure that we're that we have the kind of standards right, for right. quality in all of the programs right. that we run, and that we're not getting spread too thin. Yeah, that you don't fail because you're too successful. Right. This is right. <laughs> so it's it's a, it's a good problem to have, but it's also yes. you know it's always sad to turn a child away because there yeah. just isn't room. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's an unusual situation, but. Um, I don't think I've ever had such a problem myself, <laughs> but, but that is really interesting. Now, um, in addition to being the executive director and coordinating all of this stuff, and, and by the way, all of that training, I, I suppose, well, before we go on to the next point, uh, if there are any people out there who would like to start another Camp Quest somewhere, what should they do? Um, so we are working with 
regions of, uh -huh. of people running camps. And I so see. the best way, if you're interested in starting a camp, is to get involved as a volunteer at the camp that's closest to you. And then you've got a sense of what goes into running that camp, and you can work with those leaders to figure, and we can figure out and work with you to figure out how to kind of expand in a way that's sustainable, mm -hmm. that you know there's mm -hmm. enough demand in your area, there's enough of a pool of volunteers. One of the biggest uh, kind of sticking points to, to expanding is that Camp Quest, apart from three of us at the national office, is run entirely by volunteers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a lot of camps, their physical campsite that they rent could accommodate more campers, but in order to maintain the kind of supervision and, and I'll run all of the programs and things like that, they would need more volunteers I in see. order to be able to take more I campers. See. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if anybody was wanting to, or thinking, that, well, boy, I'd like to start a Camp Quest, the first thing they should do is become a volunteer at Absolutely. one of the present ones. Absolutely. That makes sense. <laughs> right. Because, <laughs> because starting a camp is really hard. Oh, and, I'm uh, sure, yes. And so, you know, I, I kind of joke that I, I treat this a little bit like the rabbi when someone wants to convert to Judaism. Uh -huh. And the rabbi has to send you away three times. Yeah, yeah. And if you still come yeah. back and, mm -hmm. and want to start a camp quest, I, I don't really send you away no, three no. times. But, <laughs> you know, I, I want people to have an understanding yeah. Yeah. of... Yes. The level of work and commitment that's involved in starting a program like this. And the best way to do that is, is to get involved on the ground and, and learn what it's really like to volunteer as a counselor, to join a camp planning committee and put together the program. Yeah, yeah. And all of those things. Yeah, yeah. Amanda, I'm trying to think, how long has it been that we've known each other? Uh, um, that's... That was, we were just talking about that on the yeah. way here. Um, yeah. We met actually at Camp Quest back in 2003, and that was my first year as a volunteer at camp. Frank was there um, leading a campfire talk on the solstice. It was the night of the summer the solstice. Summer solstice yeah. um, and he had a sundial, and uh, he was showing <laughs> us how, you know, how we could we could tell time with the sundial. And, and uh, yeah, and I, that was a great year getting involved with Camp Quest back then and at yeah. the time you know I was a graduate student I I never expected that this was going to become yeah. my career yeah. or that this was going to grow to what it is now what were your studies in I don't remember um I have a master's degree in political science okay okay that's uh, so that uh now you are now an author also I understand yes. and I brought you a copy of my book okay um, so this is Raising Free Thinkers. It is a companion volume to Parenting Beyond Belief, and the lead author is Dale McGowan, who many people are familiar with mm -hmm. from Foundation Beyond Belief, mm -hmm. the charitable work, and then he also has written these books on secular parenting. And this one, there's um, four authors, and it's more practical stuff, you know, actual activities you can do at home with mm -hmm. your kids, mm -hmm. resources, movies to watch, um, you know, communities you can get involved in. And so this is Well, for thank you. you so much. I will certainly treasure this. Uh, includes more than 100 activities. Well, mm -hmm. how long is it going to take me to do those? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Quite, quite some time, probably. <laughs> I'll need a time warp. We'll, we'll keep you busy for a while. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what, uh, what, what things you use at Camp Quest. Uh, what, sure. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about some activities. Uh, well, maybe we can discuss a few more kinds of activities, and then you can show us some of the products uh, that you employ. Sure, sure. So, I mean, one of my absolute favorite things at camp is Socrates Cafe, and that is a philosophy discussion activity. It's based on this book by Christopher Phillips, and what he did is he wanted to bring philosophy back. It's called Socrates Cafe. Yeah, Socrates Cafe. Um, and he wanted to bring philosophy back to ordinary people. He said, you know, it's great that we do philosophy in the academy, but these are questions like what is knowledge? What is, you know, what is meaning and purpose mm -hmm. in our lives? What is beauty? What is friendship? That, that people have been asking for thousands of years and that are important things for all people to explore. And so he started leading philosophy discussion groups in nursing homes and in prisons and in the third grade classroom at the local elementary school. And, and he traveled all over the country doing this. And so we do this at camp. And what's really cool about it is that 
so much of the time, I think kids, when adults are talking to them and asking them questions, it's read my mind. It's uh -huh. I have the answer in my mind and I want you to tell me the answer. This is not like that at all. What this mm -hmm. is is we are coming together to become better questioners. We're not going to find the answer to what is knowledge in in an hour yes. sitting here, but we're all participating, pushing each other to develop our better our ideas, and um, and participating as equals. The adults don't have the answer to these questions either, and so you'll see kids come out of their shell and talk that you think maybe at school they don't talk. Yeah, you know, and and like. There was, this, there was this girl at Camp Quest Chesapeake a few years ago. I lead this activity, so I could go on and on. But um, she's like 11, right? And we're having this conversation, and, and all of a sudden she says, don't you just think the world is made up of arguments? <laughs> and it just blew my mind, yeah. you know? It was yeah. just like, we're, you know, yeah. kids are thinking about things in abstract things, complicated things, and so much of the time they just don't have a place Yes. Where they're allowed to express that and yeah. be taken seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's one of my absolute favorite things. I, I, I like, uh, I'd like to go back to something you mentioned about the kids thinking, well, the teacher has everything, has the answer in his head, mm -hmm. and now you have to try to find it, mm -hmm. versus nobody really has the answer, and how mm -hmm. do we go about looking for it? Right. I, I was a teacher for 20 years before I came to Ohio, and uh, I was very conscious of that sort of problem. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, in teaching the sciences, in the early levels of the sciences, you, you have indeed the situation where, yes, I do have the answer, right, and, right. and so forth. But as you get farther in any of the sciences, you get to the point where, well, this is an unanswered question, mm -hmm. and then you have to try to have your students learn how to explore and, and, and how to see if they can find out further right. information and so on. And so the name Camp Quest mm -hmm. is, I believe, not an accidental name. Right, so Quest is an acronym for yes. question, understand, explore, search, and test. Um, so similar to the steps in the scientific method. Yes. And you know, one thing that I've just that strikes me about the way we teach science is that we teach science as though it's a body of facts. Yeah. It took me to graduate school to learn yeah. that science wasn't a body of facts. It that method. it was a method, a method. for learning yes. things. Yes. And so like here's an example of something we do at camp. This is a mystery tube, <laughs> and you know you pull the strings, and okay, well sometimes you pull the string and this happens, and sometimes you pull the string and something else happens, and you know so you've got this black box. You don't know what's going yeah. on, what the mechanism is inside yeah. here, and so you know this is something you can give to kids and have them play with it, yes. and have <clears> them come up with hypotheses. So what, you know, what do you think is going on inside the tube? And how would you find out? How would you test mm -hmm. the, the things that you think? Mm -hmm. So draw out what you think is going on. Then, okay, well, if I pull this and that happens, that might falsify my hypothesis about mm -hmm. what's going on mm -hmm. in here. So there are simple ways that even with fairly young children, and our campers go down mm -hmm. to age eight. Mm -hmm. For a week of sleepaway camp, you know, eight is about as young as mm -hmm. you can handle being away from home yeah. for a whole yeah. week mm -hmm. in an intense summer camp kind of environment. Yeah. yeah. But this is the kind of thing that we want to do when we teach science. I've actually figured that out. There are tiny little elves inside, and there are actually eight of those cords. And, and the elves are either pushing or pulling. Uh, yes, that's very clear. You're not, you're not supposed to spoil it for everyone. I wasn't going to tell everyone the answer. Okay. You know, now anyone who watches the video will know. All right, okay, so enough of my silliness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you've got a bunch of other things here. What, what, right. uh, what do you want to show us? So um, another program that we have been doing at Camp Quest for, gosh, I think maybe since 1998 when Fred Edwards started coming to Camp Quest. Uh -huh. Fred, what, tell, tell us who Fred Edwards is. Sure. Um, so Fred is a former executive director of the American Humanist Association and a past editor of... Um, the Humanist Magazine. 
He now, I believe, is the director of the Humanist Foundation. Mm -hmm. And he came to camp for 10 years, from 1998 to 2008. He was actually the first president of Camp Quest Incorporated when I it see. became a separate corporation oh, from the okay. Free Inquiry Group because it was starting to outgrow its home mm -hmm, in a local mm -hmm. group. You know, People mm -hmm. were starting to start camps in other states, and it's like, well, okay, maybe we should think about this as more of a its own independent national project. But Fred knew a lot about famous, he called them famous free thinkers, people mm -hmm. throughout the world, throughout history, in all different walks of life who were skeptical of traditional religious dogma and also made some impact on the world. So, you know, this includes... Let's hold it up so people can sure. see it. Yeah. So this includes all sorts of people, everyone from founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson, who was a deist. So yeah, we're not yeah. strictly yeah, talking yeah. about atheists yeah, right, here. Yeah. Um, but also people that kids can relate to, um, can relate to today, like Chris Cluey, who was a punter for the Minnesota yeah. Vikings. Um, you know, we've got people. There's just a movie that's come out um, about Alan Turing, right. who, the imitation game, right? Yes. Who, who basically invented computation. Yeah, I mean, well, which is yeah, fascinating, yeah, fascinating, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and then you know we have, uh, oh. I've got this out of order now, but uh, but we've also got Marie Curie, and we have 54 of these cards. And how can people get these cards? So you can get access to all of this information at openlysecular.org slash famous dash freethinkers. Say so, that once more, we'll fly it on the screen right, too. But openlysecular.org slash famous dash Freethinkers. Okay. Um, the Stiefel Free Thought Foundation. Oh, um, Todd Stiefel. Right, yeah. Todd. He has come to camp as a volunteer and led Famous Freethinkers, and his kids have come to camp, and he's also one of the big partners behind this openly secular project mm -hmm. to get people to come out and be open about their secular identity, mm -hmm. because we found you know that's what really changes the culture. It's those person-to-person -person yes, conversations. Sure. So he contacted us and said, hey. I want to support the developing of more of these famous freethinker cards for you to use at camp with a grant, and then let's share them with the world on the Openly Secular website. Mm -hmm. So the physical cards, you have to come to camp. So you have to oh. either volunteer oh, or be I a see. camper ah, to, get, okay. to get these for, for now. Maybe in the okay. future we'll, we'll release oh. them um, into the wild, but oh. all of the information <laughs> you can get online. All right. So what else have you brought here? Oh, these are just... Um, this is our, our little logo, um, and Edwin's daughter developed this logo, and it's, you know, it's the infinity symbol. But and it's then it's broken. Right, it's broken. So it's a C and a Q. Oh, oh I um, see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, we, uh, we really, we kind of updated this a little bit, and we made the Q tail a little brush stroke, like some kid has come oh, along and mm -hmm. just said, I know how to make this better. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh, you know? uh-huh. Um, okay. And then these are uh, our little <laughs> dragon and unicorn and they kind of get to another program mm -hmm. that we do at Camp Quest. We, uh, all of our camps have invisible mythical creatures mm. that wander around the campground and, and they're friendly, you know, they won't hurt you. They're not, you know, um, they're not dangerous or anything. They, they're kind of protectors. Um, and some camps, um, you know, have dragons, some have Bigfoots, um, the traditional Camp Quest Ohio creatures are the two invisible unicorns. Yes, yes. And we offer to campers a challenge if they can prove that those two invisible unicorns don't exist, um, they can win a godless $100 bill. <laughs> so that's a $100 bill from before In God We Trust right. was put on the money in mm -hmm. the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. So far the prize remains unclaimed, <laughs> um, but, but every year we do have campers try very hard. This so. is, yes, the proving the, uh, the uh, indetectable negative. This is right. <laughs> um, and that's been, that's been a really fun activity, and it's evolved in different ways. I can years. see that that would get the kids into some very deep philosophical and epistemological mm -hmm. uh, thinking. Right. In a way that's that's fun. Yes, too, sure. You know, and yeah. a lot of summer camps, and it's a very typical summer camp thing to have, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. camp lore and, exactly. oh, these, sure. these creatures and the history of our camp. Yes. And, yeah. um, and so, you know, how do those stories get constructed? How do they get spread? Why do people believe them? Mm -hmm. Can they be proven? Mm -hmm. um, there's all sorts of fun directions you can go with, you know, 
oh, you know, Camp Quest West, um, they have a Bigfoot, mm -hmm. and the Bigfoot's name is Shri, and Shri has an email address and, and a Facebook, and I, I understand that Shri will answer your email. So I think it's S-C-H-R-E-E -E at campquest.org. Um, oh, my so, gosh. So, you know, I don't know. That might be evidence that Shri is, is real. Is real. Shri, Shri will answer yeah, your email. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Chris, going from trying to disprove the invisible unicorn to trying to disprove the existence of Thor or Jupiter or right whoever. And, <laughs> you know, it's people ask us a lot about you know, well, are you indoctrinating kids into mm -hmm. atheism? Yes, yes, you're brainwashing them. And nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah. You know what we do at camp. First of all, we are very, very committed to the point that Richard Dawkins made that the children should not be labeled with the religious yeah. or non-religious or political yes. identities of their parents. So children come to camp, and that's why, you know, when I talk about camp, I say we're aimed at children from non-religious families. That's kind of a clunky way to phrase it. Yeah, why would yeah. you do that? Well, first of all, aimed at. Yeah. We're open to kids from all backgrounds, and we've had kids whose parents are religious come to camp. Really? Yeah, well, sometimes, you know, um, grandparents aren't religious and parents are, I or see. one parent's religious mm -hmm. and one parent isn't. Uh -huh. And so you'll have kids who, you know, they're still figuring out what they believe, and we want to be a place where they can learn critical thinking skills, make friends, and be taught that it's not wrong to ask questions. Mm -hmm. So we've had campers at camp who believe in God, and they have a great week at camp. And you know what they learn? They learn that atheists are okay. Yeah. You know? It's all right not to believe right. in it's God. It's okay or to not believe mm -hmm. in God. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really important distinction. Sure. We teach kids that it's okay to not mm -hmm. believe in God. Mm -hmm. We don't teach kids, don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to provide a space for that thought and questioning and let kids develop their worldview as they grow up. Just like we, we did. Yes. I mean, I think most atheists you talk to, they came to these conclusions after thinking and reading and talking to people. And, you know, it, they didn't become atheists just because their parents were. Right, right. And, yes. and we don't want that for our children either. Yeah. I was going to be a Lutheran minister, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was raised Lutheran as well, but yeah. I, I didn't yeah. make it through confirmation. So... <laughs> Yeah, well, I had an eight-year scholarship to the seminary. It would, have, it would have been four years of high school oh, and wow. four years of college seminary. Wow. But uh, my father had died just a year before, and I was 12 years old, and my mother said, no, you can't go away. Actually, she was lying. Uh, she said that I had to stay on the farm to help. Ah, okay. Well, my father had never worked on the farm. <laughs> but it was my grandfather's farm. But anyway... Uh, it later it turned out my mother became an atheist also oh, many years later wow. after I was out and so on. Right. But I think already at that time she was seriously questioning all that right. stuff and was probably horrified at the thought of her number one son uh, becoming a preacher. <laughs> so, well, and making that choice at age 12. Well, yeah. You know? yeah and that's, that's a yeah, thing that, yeah. um, that troubles me about a lot of, of religious organizations is that they want to get kids exactly. to commit to <clears throat> something in, an, in right. a kind of unchanging way when they're too young to yeah. be making those commitments. Yeah. This is especially true in Catholicism. Mm -hmm. they, they want them to uh, uh, pledge to become nuns or, or priests. Uh, Give me a child until you're yes, seven. Yes, there right? you go. Exactly. Um, exactly. And so, you know, things like the good news clubs, yeah. infiltrating the public schools, mm -hmm. or, you know, these other attempts to kind of sneak these ideas into kids without right. them having a chance to reason about them and yeah. think critically about yeah. them, that is, is completely antithetical to our values. Right. So, you know, what we want to do is we don't want to be Jesus camp for atheists. Yes. We want to be a place where you can come, you can know that questions are not off limits, mm -hmm. you can have a safe space to discuss, to think about things, and whatever you believe at the end of the day, you've learned that, hey, atheists are part of right. America, right. and yeah. they're, you know, they're cool people. My yeah. cabin counselor was an atheist, and he was awesome, and, you know, um, and then you learn some tools that yes. you can apply to all sorts of areas of your life. Well, um, 
I think maybe the last thing we should talk about in this first program, and we will have a second program uh, about the history of Camp Crest and, and Edwin Kagan and Helen Kagan, but um, I'm wondering, where do you see Camp Quest, Camp's Quest <laughs> going? Uh, sure. What, what's the future hold? Well, so this is pretty exciting right now because in the last 20 years, we started in 1996, so this summer will be Camp Quest Ohio's 20th session. Wow. We've gone from 20 campers to 1,000 campers. My goodness. And that's just in the U.S. That's actually not counting yeah. our international allies. Uh-huh. Um, in the next five years, by 2020, we have that we call it Envision 2020, our 2020 vision. We want to double to 2,000 campers in 2020. And right now, we're having 18 weeks of camp. In 2020, we want to have 40 weeks of camp. My word. So, and we're targeting, as we expand, we want camps within a reasonable driving distance mm -hmm. of the 40 largest cities in America. Mm -hmm. That, you know... In the beginning, parents put their kids on planes and had them travel all the way across the country to come to camp. Yeah. And that's amazing, but that's yeah. something that for a lot of families is just no. beyond their comfort no, zone, no, no, beyond no. their financial yes, means. Yes. And so we don't want you know you to have to go 10 hours to get to Camp Quest. We want you to be able to get to Camp Quest in three hours. Yes. Um, so that's some of our kind of big plans for the next five years. We're also talking about, and I'm, I'm even a little scared to mention this, we're beginning to explore the idea of what it would look like for us to purchase a campground. Ah. All of our camps from the beginning on have been, we rent from a 4-H mm -hmm. or a Boys and yeah. Girls Club. Yeah. Um, and those relationships are fantastic. And I think that we will definitely continue to have rental locations mm -hmm. all over the mm -hmm. place so we can reach families in all different parts of the country. But how cool would it be to have our own place yes. that's a, a flagship where we yes. run programs all yeah. summer, we run retreats during the winter, mm -hmm. you know, maybe organizations like American Atheists would want to hold a, you know, a weekend retreat yes. and yes. they could hold it at our camp. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's something that we're just beginning to explore and I'm excited about that because that was always Edwin's vision. Mm -hmm. And so being able to see that come hopefully you know yes have that something we're working towards and that maybe that can come to fruition mm -hmm. that would be an amazing kind of fulfillment of his dream wonderful wonderful well that's exciting okay as we close this one more time with feeling what is the website to which people should uh, look to, you should to... go to campquest.org and go there to learn how to register a camper find locations near you apply to volunteer, donate to us. We're supported by donations. Oh, yes, right. This... Um, that makes a huge, huge difference to us yes. being able to produce these materials, expand to different camps, um, admit more campers. Um, and there's also stories there by volunteers, by parents, by kids about what Camp Quest means to them. So you oh, can kind right. of hear from someone other than me about you know what the Camp Quest experience is about and how it affects families. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, I think that'll wrap up today, this uh, first interview. Actually, we will be taping a second interview yet today, but you probably won't see the second one for a week or two after you see this one. So anyway, thank you, Amanda. Thank and you, Frank. I look forward to our next interview when we talk about the history of Camp Quest. Absolutely. And the wonderful people who were so fundamental in creating that, uh, Edwin Kagan and Helen Kagan. Thank you so that's much all, for watching. That's all for now. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and tune us in for the next program.